right, are we still excited? Yeah. Woohoo, great. I was like, let me see how the crowd is. But you guys, thank you first of all for sticking around till the end. And, um, you know, we have had some great conversation about so many important issues. Um, mine is going to be a little 101 almost. And I hope, to, uh, hope that when you guys leave the room, uh, you leave with a ray of hope and a lot of positivity. Um, just a little bit of introduction. I am Samya Pandey, and I tried to put a nice picture up there, flattering one. <laughs> um, I am a technical consultant and a developer. Um, and the reason I'm here is because I'm passionate about technology, and I care a great deal about techno inclusion in technology, just like all of you in the room are. Um, so what's the fun topic we're going to talk about? Um, why it's essential to demystify technology. Demystify, big word. Um, ironically, the meaning of it is to simplify something, make it easier, relatable. Um, and I don't think that's easy or relatable is the first thing that comes to people's mind when they talk about technology. Um, it's unfortunate because all of us know that there's more to it. Um, in fact, there is like this negative perception or the culture that largely was spoken about throughout this uh, conference. You know, when you Google our best friend, that's where we get all the info from. Uh, is computer science hard? That's the first thing that comes up. I mean, I'm not going to say it's as easy as tweeting. There's so much more to technology, right? It's definitely challenging. But the word hard has a negative intonation to it. And the, of course, there are challenges about diversity, inclusion, and so many other uh, things that we encounter every day when, uh, being a part of the technology field. Um, where does this stem from? There are so many reasons that we have these perceptions. One of the most basic things or keyword that I can describe is probably stereotyping. And the stereotyping, not just in the field of technology, but everywhere in our lives, when we there are stereotypes, and it kind of discourages people from joining it or being a part of it. So what are the stereotypes I'm talking about? Imagine you are a seventh grader, and you came across this fun app, and you want to kind of know how it's made. And someone said the buzzword computer science, technology, and you're like, whoa, let me check it out. When, where, which is the first place you go to? There are two places you might go to to get information about something. It's either through the internet, which again is our best friend, or through your friends and family. When you think about technology, this is what it will look like for a seventh grader. That funny black green screen and matrix and all of that. Um, and to just summarize it, the first impression that a child or someone who's trying to get into tech would be that it's intimidating and that it's unrelatable. Now, there are going to be some kids who are going to be excited by this. And we, again, stereotype them as geeks and nerds. And they might just not care about the fact that it looks scary. In fact, to them, it looks welcoming. But there are people for who this might not be the ideal vision they want to see when they think about tech. And this is who they will see. This is also a big part of why people might shy away from joining, especially when they're starting out. This is who they will see. Is this my type of people? Is my friend or family up there? No, sadly not. And this, I mean, I'm not saying it's just a stereotype. It's definitely a reality. But there's more to it. And we know that. That's why all of us are here, right? Um, so do we want this to be the face of tech? Do we want people to be scared away when they Google things or they talk to their friends and family? Is this what we want them to see? No, we want to show them the other side of tech. And this, again, goes back to my question that I posed, is why is it essential to demystify tech? And the simple answer is because technology is empowering, and we need a diverse group of people to embrace it. So, Technology is enabling. It's ubiquitous. We are having this conference right now because we have the aid of tools and tech that we can use and communicate, right? When you woke up this morning, your phone was probably the first thing that you interacted with, and that is, is tech. 
maybe your mother or father who is not really used to um, handling phones, they might be using a device to check their blood pressure. Even that is technology. Who said that just a, that black screen with green, you know, binary digits flowing across is tech? Everything we interact with is basically tech. And as time progresses with the big scary word artificial intelligence, automation, biotech, it's only going to become more integral part of our lives. There's no way to escape having technology some or the other way interact with us throughout our day. But as, and as I said, as time progresses, the technology intensity would increase, but will the people increase or will the face of technology change? Um, sadly, no. And I think this was said earlier in the conference, but there will be an estimated one million computing jobs uh, than the applicants who can actually fill them by year 2020 or 2024. So what I'm getting at is basically this is like a vicious cycle, you know. There is less diversity, and there's why, that's why there's the stereotype. And there's a stereotype because there is less diversity. So it's almost like, you know, a chain reaction of sorts or a circle that we keep going back and forth in. What I am talking about is kind of doing something to break that cycle. I'm not saying that this reality doesn't exist. I'm saying there's also an alternate reality that is so in the news right now, by the way, is that we can actually show the positive side. We can talk about it in a different way. And it's up to us, people like us, who are the insiders, that can do something about changing it. Because that seventh grader has no control over what he sees, he or she sees, when they are starting out, right? So what's the solution I propose? I propose we change the narrative. What do I mean by that? I want to change the narrative of how we talk about technology, how we perceive people in technology, of what it means to be working in technology. Let me give you my own example. So when I was starting out, when I was in high school, I loved math, I loved science, but at the same time, I'm, I'm a creative person. Um, and Initially, when I began, I was like, okay, computer science seems like fun, something that I could use to create and have fun with. Um, I took up computer science, and I went ahead and did my undergrad in computer science and grad school. But as I progressed and as things got, started getting more specialized, I became a victim of those stereotypes too. Like, everybody around me almost looked a certain way, and they spoke in a certain, uh, you know, language and verbiage. And it was mostly that scary black screen that I had encountered when I Googled things about it. Um, but I persisted. I was like, there was a reason I took that up, and I persisted. And again, I was somehow able to break that cycle once I started to realize what I could create. You know, when I'm what that black screen and binary could create is something that helped me continue and move forward. Um, unfortunately, for a lot of people, they might not get that chance. One th another thing that helped me stay was the community and encouragement I got from insiders. There's, that seventh grader would not know we are having a conference like this where people are there to encourage and support each other and talk about this stuff, right? So. <clears throat> I want the message to come across sooner and not when people are in tech and not when we're talking about it as a community. I want that narrative to go beyond the insider realm. Um, so what do we need to talk about exactly? We need to talk about the potential. Inspire them with possibilities. One thing that we can, when I say potential, is like I said, diversity not in terms of just who the people are, but also of what technology looks like. You don't just have to be a software developer to be someone in technology. You can be a UI UX designer. You can be a solutions architect. Or you might just be a product manager or someone in finance, but you still might be interacting with technology. Your contribution is still valuable to, to shell out new products in technology that are helping people and that are reaching so many people across the globe. And potential and possibilities in terms of the people, you need to tell them that it's not just a single face that is going to be smart enough to do the tech job, right? Um, another thing I want to bring out, and it kind of goes back to how important tech is going to be in our lives moving forward, 
is that you don't have to be a professional either. You can just be someone for wh whom it's a hobby. You know, you might just be a painter or an artist. You might be a music director who might want to use technology to create great tunes. Or you might be a painter who might want to use this to create digitized art, right? So we need to talk to people and say, hey, you know, this is not it. The scary black stuff is not just, that's not, there is all about technology. You can do so much more with it. And the idea is just to create this basic literacy around technology. And, portray it in a fun and nice manner so that everybody thinks that on some level, I, like either uh, largely or small, they can relate to it and they want to be a part of the field. Um, and by doing this, we will encourage more diversity, diversity of ideas, of people and perspectives. So like I said, this was almost like a vicious cycle, but by encouraging people and saying, hey, you know what, if, even if you're a music director, come talk to us. We might be able to tell you how you can participate in tech. And that's, that's how they might get hooked on. And once they're here, they might want to collaborate, collaborate with us and bring their diverse thought process into what we are creating. So, and when I'm speaking of this, it's funny, but I, when I submitted this proposal, I hadn't read this article, but just yesterday I came across this and I had to post this. Melinda Gates spoke recently at um, a graduation and she was talking about women in tech, but it largely applies to all diverse and minority groups. I worry that if we let the negative storyline overwhelm the positive ones, we'll scare away talented women who want to be in tech and who deserve to be. I think it's important that women technologists support each other by spreading the word that while the industry is still far from perfect, it's also a place where you can have a successful, rewarding career and an outsized impact on the world. So this kind of just solidifies the ideology that I'm trying to present here, that yes, we have our own challenges, yes, we have difficulties, yes, we have a great deal of issues with diversity and inclusion, but there are some good things. There are conferences like these which are encouraging each other, right? And we need to talk more about that. So the key words to kind of remember here is you need to talk to people, and by that I mean talk to your family, your neighbors, on the dining table when you're eating food. Just let your mother know like, hey mom, it's not scary. Come here, let me talk a little bit about this fun app that you might find useful. Um, talk to that kid, seventh grader or sixth grader around you and say, you want to be a sports person? Okay, that's cool, but you might be able to use tech to kind of, uh, in the future, trace your statistics of how fit you are or how your, uh, I don't know, how your performance is improving. So they kind of get comfortable around technology and they embrace technology. And one big thing that I want to emphasize on Please try to simplify things when you speak of tech. Of course, when you are in a specialized group, you are a programmer and you're in the group of people who understand your language, yeah, go ahead, talk about that library or package. But let's say you're in a group, even at your workspace, if you're in a group that's diverse, you, you are a developer, but you might have a designer or someone from management sitting there. Please try to break it down. When you're talking to someone who's younger and trying to get into the field and wanting an introduction of what, what a fundamental language would be to begin, don't just say Python is because blah, 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 it's object oriented and things like that. They wouldn't have a clue. Tell them something like, oh, you know what, Python is super friendly, it's almost like me talking to you and using that you can um, you know, force your browser to play your favorite song every second hour. And that idea is what might get them excited to ask you more questions. So try to simplify, make it relatable. Definitely fight the biases. If you see something happening wrong at your workplace, in your community, some stereotype, just raise your voice. Let the person who is a victim know that you support them. Encourage more people to get in. And overall, just participate. Participate in community events like these. and. Uh, participation in you know spreading the idea um, so before I go just kind of leaving this thought behind like I said I would I promise I would leave you with hope and the hope is just that with us trying to change this narrative we can get more people involved we can get more diverse spaces involved this right here this room is the hope this is the hope you're looking for and 
this is because we understand that technology is not just about a certain language or a program. It's this over, it's, it's, it's a bigger power that connects us, that unites us, and that amplifies your power as individual and as a whole community. So always remember that and just the key, remember this, that however you talk about it is how people are gonna know about it and it's up to you to bring more diversity and more change in the world. Um, so that's it, thank you so much, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them.